الأنبياء والمرسلين أبو القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Before I start, um, my little brothers are here. I need your eyes on me. So I want you to come up here with me for a second. So drop your electronics and just come up here. Come stand right next to me right here. So drop, drop the electronics and just come up here just for a second. Okay. And I want you to look at your parents. All right? So I traveled about four and a half hours just to get here. And it's usually not for the adults. It's not. Here's what's happening across the board. Right now, they're downloading software, whether you like it or not. That's what they're doing. I'm really here for them. Because there's a lot of power that's happening. In the United States and around the world, in advertising, there's about $596 billion that's spent on marketing and advertising. So around $600 billion per year around the world. In the United States, it's number one. Literally. You know what they're trying to rob? They're trying to rob real estate in one of their heads. That's literally what they're doing. So marketing is very strong. Our marketing has to be stronger. Why? Because if we don't download the right systems and the right things, it's going to be very difficult for them to fight the next battle. And it's a battle. There's a psychological war, bottom line. And you can't sit on the sideline. You can. So electronics are beautiful. But we got to learn how to control them. Two hours a day max. Believe me, it's too much. It's like you see a kid, and there's a phone sticking out of the side of their head. That's what's happening. And you've got to be very aware. And it's happening, believe me. So, here's what we're going to do, guys. You guys ready? You're going to put your right hand up. So put your right hand up. And you're going to say right after me. Say, Mom, Dad. Please, Please. Do, not do not allow me, allow me. To, to spend, spend more, more than, than two, two hours, hours a day electronics. electronics. Please make me a promise because I am your servant <laughs> and you have control over me. So please do not break that trust. I love you, mom and dad. Thank you. You guys can sit down. So now we've gotten that clear out of the way. So you guys go back to your electronics, right? So drop the electronics. How's this? Bring on. Grab them right here and put them right here. You guys have to listen. I'm the speaker. So you guys have to listen to me. So come put your electronics right here. Yep. You see, the electronics are more powerful than me. Believe me. And if you don't limit them, it's what happens. It's an addiction, literally. And I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about how these, this stuff happens. And if you look at a kid like managing a phone, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And what's happening overall, like I just saw a study, and I'll begin my lecture right after this, but I think this is very important. They had about, I think she was 16 months of uh, of age and so a year and four months and she was given an iPad and she was flipping through it like no problem and they gave her a magazine and she's like 
She's doing this to the magazine. She's like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So the mind is being reprogrammed. It's happening. It's happening. And we have to be very aware. We have to. If you're not, good luck down the line. Because when a kid has autonomy and they can do what they want, good luck. So with that, Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I'm taking these home, by the way. Okay. So from here, what we're going to talk about first, inshallah, in tonight's presentation, I decided to go after setting up a structure, a belief structure. What does that take? What do you have to do to set up a belief structure for you as a person? Because at the end of the day, you have software and you're running off that software. Whether you like it or not, your mind is like a machine. You download software into it. So what should you be your software? And what should it stand on? And I'm gonna talk about that. Then from there, after that, I'm gonna talk how principles formulate. How do you make a, how do you generate and make a principle and download it into your system? Then after that, I'm gonna talk about what happens when we move away from our principles. So I'll try to give you that whole series Hopefully in the next coming nights. Salah ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the Quran it states, Inna anzalnaq bil haq. That means we have sent you with the truth. So on that level, one has to understand what is the truth. Is it a cell phone? Is it a game? What is the truth? And how do you distinguish between truth and falsehood? In the Quran it says, تَبَيِّنَ الرُّشْدِ مِنَ الْغَيْنِ Truth is clear from error. So what happens to us when we build a belief structure that's based on truth? And watch this. Once we start understanding the difference between those two things, you're going to see how you progress in life. So let me ask you guys really quickly. What was your first job? Somebody give me some, some volunteers. Give me your first job. Teaching. Teaching, okay, good. What else? Software engineering. Software engineering, mashallah. What else? Come on, a few more volunteers, go ahead. <laughs> Excellent, okay. I will differ with all of you. And I tell you, the first job was what? For you to scream when you came out of your mother's womb. That was your first job. That was your first choice. Because you're like, what did you do? Why did you bring me out here? Your second job was to do what? Find some milk. Third job, learn how to speak. Fourth job, crawl. Fifth job, walk. Do you see how responsibility is growing from the first second you enter this world? He fashions you in the womb of your mother as he pleases. And when you come out, you are pure and unique. You are purely unique. No individual has existed is existing or will exist that's like you. That's an incredible concept. I am so unique and special that Allah Azza wa Jal chose me and He fashioned me in this uniqueness. That's incredible. Now He gave me jobs and He brought me in the first five jobs. Do you see the responsibility that's growing? in each job. Guess what? It never stops growing. Responsibility does never, it never stops growing. It keeps getting harder and harder and harder. MashaAllah. You're, you're having some sleepless nights, I know that. It gets harder and harder and harder. 
It doesn't stop. And it's not waiting for you. It's not. So if we don't build the right construction under each level, wow. My brother's here, right? Some of you retreated to the back. I'll bring you back up, don't worry. But when you guys are playing a game, doesn't the game get harder and harder and harder? Doesn't it? Don't your skills have to get better and better and better? It's the same thing with life. When you play the game of life, it's incredible what happens. So you have to build the right belief structure underneath each level of responsibility. That's how it works, whether you like it or not. So some of you said teaching, correct? Thank you, sister, for volunteering first. I appreciate it. But from there, you start understanding that I have to build the right foundation. And if I don't, what happens when I try to hit the next level of responsibility? My belief structure is going to collapse. That's what happens to us. If you don't build yourself stage by stage by stage, the next level of responsibility, you will not have the right belief structure to uphold the responsibility that's coming to your door tomorrow. Hence, when you see Imam Hussein alayhi salam, what does he do in the nights when what? Muawiyah died. Study history. Do you think Imam Hussein can just come out like that? His belief structure had to be what? Built stage by stage by stage, so you can make those kinds of decisions. How many people stood with Imam Hussein? Very little. Look at the other side. A lot. We think that just on the, when the Imam appears, we're just gonna go. Yeah, Imam, I got this. That's it, I'm just gonna go. You know what's gonna happen? Your heart's gonna tell you, no, we're not going. This thing is going to tell you, you know what, let's go. You can do it. But if you are not constructed properly, and if you don't have the right stage and belief, don't think you're just going to get up and go. It's not going to happen. The longest journey you will ever go through is from here to here. That's the longest journey. You know why? Because these things have to connect properly. When these things connect, you connect. And what happens when the situation comes to your door and says, come on here, I have something to say to you. When the situation came to Imam Hussein and he was offered to give bayah to Yazid, that's the situation. That's responsibility coming to your door, whether you like it or not. That's how it works. Now your belief structure is gonna be able to handle that responsibility. Our kids are our responsibility. They're a trust on you. Don't give them the wrong things. Build the right system step by step by step. So when it's time for them to say no, like Imam Hussein alayhi salam says no, they can do it. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Ya Allah, salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So overall, we have to build the right belief structure. How does that happen? Let's see how it happens. And how do you build? And what substance do you need to what? build that structure? Let's go there. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ بِالْحَقِّ In the Quran, it's talking to the Prophet. We have sent you with the truth. We said, what is the truth? And then we said, truth is clear from falsehood. It's clear. لَا إِكْرَاهَ فِي الدِّينِ قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْدِ مِنَ الْغَيْنِ It's clear. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا We say it every day. Show us the true path. 
Allah has made it clear. He's given you 14 guides. He's given you a manual, a book. And he's told you, follow. We have shown him the way. He's either thankful or he rejects. It's up to you at the end of the day. Because understand, on the day of judgment, you're going to be standing alone. Like Imam Hussein was standing alone on the land of Karbala. You're going to be standing alone. No one's going to be next to you. Tall, big, short, small, 50, 25, 30, 70, it doesn't matter. It's coming. So you better be believe, build the right belief structure. Some of us, we may think that we have it. But when the challenge comes, wow, you see who you really are. When you get tested, Surely we will test you. You're going to be tested. And understand that challenge when it comes to your door. And you have the right belief structure. It's the most beautiful thing you can go through. That challenge will sharpen the blades of your soul. It will develop you into a different human being. It's beautiful. Once you learn how to fall in love with responsibility, you become completely different. Why? Please pay attention to this. Responsibility actually triggers the same neural network as drugs from cocaine, alcohol, hallucinogens, the same neural circuits. It's amazing. Goal pursuit is almost all positive emotion. Think about that. Allah has already set the circuitry in your brain. But for you to activate those thoughts, not stimulants, that you need a stimulant to activate and get you to another level. We don't need that. You know what we have? The Quran. Now, Prophet and we have the imams who are absolutely impeccable in terms of application towards life. Amazing in responsibility when the challenge comes. So now he's been sent with the truth. Here's what we do with the truth. If we don't build our belief structure on the truth, what happens? Watch this. You have two choices. And I'm telling you, some of you and some of us, I'm saying, not some of you, hopefully nobody in here. But some of us, we become professional liars to ourselves first. The first person you start selling, you know who it is? It's you. How does this happen? You start lying to yourself in terms of who you are. My kids are on the phone, it's okay, it's okay, okay. We rationalize. We give excuses. We think we're okay. That's the first path. Whenever you see yourself beginning to rationalize your thought process, be very afraid of yourself. Believe me, if you just understand what I just said, it's incredible. Because you have two paths. You either lie to yourself or accept that I need work. Guess what? Most of us don't like this person. We don't want to say that to ourselves. So what do we do? We begin lying to ourselves. Is that with the truth? Or is that with falsehood? Think about that. Once you start building a belief structure on falsities, it's incredible what happens to you and where you go, and how you stray off the path without even knowing. So ultimately, the first person that you have to be honest with is who? Yourself. Me. That's not easy. That's not an easy thing. 
Because honesty with the self is very difficult. It means I have to look at my negatives, not my positives. Now go to the master of science and application, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Watch. There's a concept in psychology called cognitive dissonance. I'm going to explain it, and I'm going to show you how we become professional liars to ourselves. Cognitive dissonance is when you actually do something that's against your own beliefs. Your actions go against your beliefs. I believe that I should be in Imam Hussein's corner, but my actions go to Yazid's corner. What do I do when that happens? Do I rationalize and tell myself, it's okay, it only happened one time. I'm just learning. Or do I really look at myself and study myself and go into discovery mode and I reflect and I see my own situations and what they are for the truth of what is in them? Do I study who I am? Do I bring myself out on the table and I say, look, here's what you did. And this is the truth. And this is what happened. Or do I rationalize? Surely man will be a witness against who? His own self. So imagine on the day of judgment, Allah brings out your own intention right in front of you. Imagine that. Really think about that situation. That Allah, is there anything more intimate to you than your own intention? Think about that. Is there something closer to you than your own intention? And imagine Allah brings it out in front of you and says, here. And Allah says in the Quran, you will still give your excuses. <coughs> wow. Look how arrogant we can be in terms of lying to ourselves. Because when someone doesn't have truth, guess what? They have arrogance if they think they're right. Look at the shaitan. Allah commanded him to bow to Adam. He says, I am better than him. In superior comparison. He's compared himself to who? To Adam. He says, I am better than him. You created me from fire, and you created him from what? Mud. Look at the comparison. And now what happens? I know better than you, Allah. I know better. You want me to submit to him? Uh-uh, I will never do it. I know better. We can get to that level as well. That is dangerous. So now what happens? Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Gives us the answer. And he gives us the answer for this understanding. One side <coughs> will rationalize. Another side, Imam Ali will tell you what to do in du'a kumay. He says, And he uses nine different states. Munkasiba, Mu'atarifa, Muniba. Wow. Your heart is getting the right medicine. It's not lying to itself. And it's being healed the right way. So when I come to Allah and I say, Ya Allah, I'm admitting, I did one, two, three. It softens the heart. It softens the heart. Why? Because truth is embedded in the words. And your belief structure is being built on the truth. So within your thought process is embedded truth. When that happens, you start admitting to your faults and your mistakes. And now you go to Allah in the middle of the night. You put your head in sujood and you say, Ya Allah, forgive me. I've done so much. I've done A, B, C, D, and E. Please. You are you, and I am me. 
I am weak and you are strong. I can be gone in a second. You're eternal. You have all the power. And I am super fragile. Become like that in the middle of the night with Allah. That is the truth. When you do that, what happens to your heart? It's being built on truth. And you're admitting to the truth. Ya Allah, I've made this mistake. I've backbitten this person. I've said something wrong about this person. I've cheated this person. Help me, help me, or I don't do this stuff anymore. You're admitting, this is why Dua Kumail is so important. They are scientists of the soul and the heart. And when you download their program, that's what happens to you. You're downloading the truth. And when that swims in your thoughts, you're building the correct belief structure. So the next time you have to take on the next challenge, guess what? You're ready. Heck, you've been ready. Come. Come. I'm ready. It doesn't matter how big the wave is. I'm ready. It doesn't matter how long I have to live. I'm ready. If I have to exit tomorrow, I'm ready. It doesn't matter. That is ultimate strength. Up here becomes so tough that nothing can break you. Life and responsibility become so enjoyable that nothing can touch you. Why? Because you're admitting to yourself who you really are. And the truth is swimming in your thought process. So that's the first person we cannot lie to, is who? Ourselves. That's number one. Number two, who else we can't lie to? Others. <coughs> Lean in with this. As you're climbing and responsibility hits, guess what? Start having a family, you're responsible for kids, Maybe a wife, a wife is responsible for her husband, she's responsible for her kids. Now you're responsible for others. Imagine for your whole life, you just built a belief structure of what? Falseness. What are you gonna download into those kids? You gotta be very careful in who you are. What runs your DNA? Is it true? If that's the case, then when the Imam comes, you will not hesitate. Your heart is connected. And this is how we build a principle. I'm going to take you into that. Salaam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So you have to build the principle of truth with yourself first. And you become honest. And with others, honesty is like a spear that pierces through fear. Why are we afraid to say the truth? It's not safe to speak, by the way. It's not safe. We're in the land of the free, correct? Try to say what you think. Good luck. It's not safe. You have to be very eloquent if you're in your speech. You have to be very wise in how you conduct yourself. You have to know how to apply your knowledge through the lens of wisdom. You have to. You have to be so good at what you do that you can navigate around any situation. And you're that tactical. You can take on any situation. And I'll give you a quick little example. I speak at conferences. And 99% non Muslims. And sometimes they have to give prizes. And guess who's standing on stage? Me. Standing on stage. And some of 
the recipients are female. And guess what happens when they go up to the stage? They're going to shake your hand. And some of them do a lot more than that. And here I am. And I'm standing there. You see the responsibility and the challenge. You have a lot of people just watching you. And you're standing right next to the CEO of the whole company. What do you do? Is the situation going to win and collapse your principle? Or is your principle going to stand up and knock down the what? Situation. Here's how you work. Ali is with the truth. And the truth is with Ali. When you can hold his principle, it doesn't matter the situation. So here I am, I'm standing. And now, I'm just praying to Allah. Please, Ya Allah, don't allow any of the people or the recipients to be female. This hope, it's hope. First person, it's a male. Alhamdulillah. Gotcha. Second person, it's a male. Alhamdulillah. Now I committed to shaking hands as well. So am I going to look like I have double standards? Or I'm biased? Subhanallah. The test just got worse. I just realized what I just did. The third person is a female. And now she's walking up to the stage. There's two people before me. And there's a person on my left. She gets to the stage. She jumps on the first person. And now I'm looking at this, and I'm, Ya Allah, what do I do? Look at the situation. It's not easy. But at that moment, I made a decision. I said to myself, I'm not going to shake her hand. I don't care. You have to make that decision. But does your heart follow your decision? Is your heart synced with that? Does it say, Ya Allah, I'm with you. I know you will protect me. Can you do that in that kind of moment? I'm not telling you I can do that all the time, but that was one of the best decisions I ever made. Why? Because watch what happens. And I said to myself, I'm not going to do it. That's where it starts. But the heart has to follow. Some of us, we give money with our hand, but our heart is pulling us back. Is the heart connected to your actions? Is it driving your actions of where you need to go? Or is it pulling it back and you're just trying to show off to people? Look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Is that how it works? Where's your sincerity? Is that in your heart? So she jumps on the next person. And I'm saying, Ya Allah, help me. I don't know. And now it's my turn. And I swear to you, all I felt was a flash of wind come by me. And there was a girl that was standing next to the one that was standing next to me. And she grabbed her, stood between me and her, and faced her to the picture. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what happened. It just happened. At the last second. But where is your heart? Do you lie to yourself? And say what? I'm okay. 
You're training your conscience, by the way. That's what you're doing. The more you lie to yourself, the more you train your conscience to lie to yourself and to other people. Now, if you do that, you will become literally a different human being. It becomes a lot easier just to lie. Say what you need to say in the moment and you rationalize afterwards. You gotta be very careful when you're treating others and how you work. So now, let's just go into how principles are formulated then we'll end it for tonight. Inshallah, we'll pick it up tomorrow after that. Now, from here, how is a principle formulated? How does it come into existence? And how does your heart connect to thoughts? All you are at the end of the day, realize this, is a bunch of thoughts. That's all you are. You don't own anything more than that. You're, let's say you have a Mercedes, inshallah you do. Inshallah everybody in here. But you're not taking it with you, I'm sorry. You can't drive it to your grave. It's going to drive you to your grave. That's the difference. You're going to have to give everything back. Everything you own is rented. Everything. You're going to have to give it back. The only thing you take with you is what? Your deeds. That come from what? Your thoughts. And that belief structure that you have built. Is it built on truth? Or is it built on what? Falsehood. That's all you take with you. You have three friends, the Prophet says. First friend, your family. I'm sorry, first friend is your money. Second friend, your family. Third is your what? Your deeds. First friend will buy you your kafan. Second friend will wash you and bury you. And the third friend will go down with you. So you better build the right thought process. Alif la mim, dhalik al kitabu la rayba fiye. Hudan al. Wow, it's incredible. There is no error in it. It is perfect. It's a perfect book. Download it as your what? Truth. That's your system. That's your software. When you speak, speak the Quran. Talk. Don't just talk about Fortnite, guys, right? When I say Fortnite, you guys are no, not paying attention. Where are the kids? You guys, I got your attention now, huh? But when I talk about that, then when I ask you who's the seventh Imam, do you know? What happened in the history to Imam Hussein? Do you know? And take this with you. There's a little cell in your brain that holds the name of Hussein. Really think about that. You own a thought that's so expensive, you have no idea how much it's worth. We all are a bunch of thoughts, correct? And one cell in your brain hold a name that is so valuable that it's incredible what you own. And not everybody has that. Not every single person has that. Why am I here? I'm here for that. For that cell that we all share. That's what connects us. And the world needs to know. Because the world needs to know especially at this time, especially at this time. His name will always rise and will always, always, to the end of time, echo. It doesn't matter. You cannot stop it. The wave has started and will ever grow. No one can stop it. You can either get on or you can get off. It's up to you through your actions. So now, a belief is built this way. We said you're a bunch of thoughts connected to concepts, correct? That's who you are. Then 
if you take a thought, which is like Hussein, and you infuse it with emotion, that becomes a principle. So when you hear the Adhan, like Imam Sajjad, when they were going through life, when they were being paraded on the streets, imagine you're looking at the heads, and as you're walking, this is what just happened to your family. What kind of heart do you have to have? What kind of strength do you have to have as a person? It's incredible. Now Imam Sajjad gets the outskirts of the city of Sham. And from there, an old man comes to him. He says, think God our master has killed you. Think about that. Look how confused people are. Think about a belief structure built on what? Truth. And a belief structure built on falsehood. Look at the difference. And this man thinks he's 100% in the correct, in the right. If you think at the end of the day, you cannot end up like that, wow, you're too safe. If you don't have enough hope and enough fear in your heart that you're not balanced, Imam al-Baqir says you need both. They're like two wings of a bird. You need both. You need to have fear of disappointing Allah. But you also have to have hope in Allah's mercy. You need both. Don't think that you're so safe that you've made it. Don't ever go there. Because you're going to be too hopeful. Now Imam Sajjad alayhi salam talks to this man. He said, have you ever heard of the verse Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of the verse? Bismillah ar-Rahman. This just makes me just wow. Just imagine the Imam. He's right there and he's looking at this man. And his own what? Father has just been taken. And now he's being accused. It's incredible. And now he says to him, he says, Have you heard of the verse? In the mind. He says, have you ever heard of this verse? He says, yes. He says, we are them. And the man starts thinking. Then he says to him, he says, have you ever heard of the verse? In terms of, And he says to him, yes, I've heard of it. He says, we are qurba. We are the ones that to hear, adhere to. That the heart is connected to that. And the man starts what? Thinking. And his heart is shifting. It's shifting. The heart is shifting. Look, look at the position. And he's doing da'wah. Imam Sajjad is actually doing da'wah in that state. Does he care for himself? Or does he care for the cause? Look, it's a battle of intellect. Who's going to win? Are you going to win when you fight yourself? Are you going to win when you fight others? Mentally. It's mental arm wrestling, whether you like it or not. It's constant. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You cannot stop thinking. You can't. It's always there. So now, he says, the old man says to him, he says, how can I be fooled to this state? Forgive me for what I have just said to you. So on that level, the old man submits, goes into sujood and says, please forgive me. He says, you've been forgiven. Don't worry about it. You've just been fooled. Believe me, a lot of us can be fooled. And thinking that what? We have the bad. Don't be so safe. Don't think that I've arrived. The minute you stop checking yourself is the minute you should know you are in danger. Know that. So the Imam alayhi salam actually starts flipping the minds and hearts of the people. There was a second Karbala. The first Karbala ended up with Imam Hussein's head. The second Karbala is when Imam Sajjad and Zainab alayhi salam stood in front of the tyrant, Yazid. 
That's another karmada. And you're going to see the power that someone can have. Inshallah, we'll go through that tomorrow. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. La Muhammad. Would you guys like to do a quick Q&A?